pulling back the parties on mod number three, Hudson versus Hudson, cause number 093-027-327. Okay, uh, so you had uh, been given a copy of exhibit B, which included the third page for the uh, Mr. Zambrano's declaration. Uh, you have an opportunity to review that. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, clarification of my um, presenting um, oral arguments regarding all three filings at the same time, or I'm sorry, you um, oral arguments regarding all three filings, like the ex parte restraining order, the um, the response to the adequate cause. What I'm addressing today is the adequate cause. That's the request for adequate cause to be established. If adequate cause is established, then temporary orders can be entered. So there'd be temporary orders based off of the restraining orders that were requested on the ex-party restraining order. So it is kind of all tied together. The restraining orders would not be effective or temporary orders would not be granted if adequate cause is not established. Okay, okay? thank you, Your Honor. So you have all of the documents now, so you're gonna go ahead. Yes, Your Honor. So uh, proceeding. Um, first on the basis for the uh, adequate cause, because really that's what I'm looking at. Yes, Your Honor. So the adequate cause, uh, first of all, the mother does not meet the threshold for adequate cause. Mm -hmm. um, she admits that I've spoken with my children. There was no willful abandonment. I've tried to keep in contact with them. I had a family emergency come up in California. The mother found out through relatives where I was and I wanted to see my children this summer. She denied me access to my children. So when I came back to Washington after helping my parents who were ill, and there's actually a ruling on that um, with regards to getting um, unemployment, that I was found in good cause for um, having to quit and then go down to California. I know it's not 100% relevant here, but just bringing that up. Um, after I helped my parents who are having, who have uh, severe chronic illness, they're like s 70 years old and older, mm -hmm. um, I came to back to Washington the 29th of September. I requested to see my children with the mother. The mother started to beat me down with, well, I'll say she, she basically demanded that I give an address. At that time, I didn't have a residential address that I could call my own. Rather, I was staying with relatives, and I had a room that I was at as well. And I wasn't able to see my children then. And then I tried to see them additionally um, in uh, Thanksgiving weekend, which was mine. The mother denied that as well. So let me ask you this. Um, you've informed the court that you plan to request a modification of your parenting plan. Yes, sir. And you're planning to go forward on that. Um, why are you opposing adequate cause for this to go forward to trial if you're going to be requesting adequate cause anyway? I'm opposing adequate cause filed by the mother because her arguments don't meet adequate cause. The threshold, she claims I have a mental illness. This was brought up pre-decree, and she signed off on the final decree stating that I'm okay, that I, my parental functions are fine. There hasn't been any significant or substantial changes. Mm -hmm. But she's also now alleging abuse, abuse of conflict since the time the petition or the parenting plan was entered. The abuse, abuse of conflict. Uh, I've made a couple calls. The Valley Medical Communication Center actually told me to call every time the parenting plan's violated mm -hmm. to get it on record. These allegations of making these false reports, I, I see no records before me and nothing that she's presented to me as exhibits that show that I claim that the children were being abused right then and there, mm -hmm. like she claims I had put in. Um, the, uh, the other piece, this, this recent um, ER involvement where I brought my daughter to the ER, this was due to her statements to me that she had brought up these issues with her mother and her mother did nothing about it for a month. And I brought her in to be checked out. It seems like she has not ever been brought into the doctor for regular checkups. So that shows that medical needs of the child are being neglected, a basic parenting function. So, so further, for entering my own adequate cause, eventually I'm going to do that. Um, 
I want to add that 191 restrictions apply to the mother on the children because the boyfriend who lives with the children in their home has either committed an assault or threatened to commit an assault. Okay. We're not going to address your petition today. Okay. Um, what you need to address is whether she's established adequate cause and whether the restraining order should remain in effect okay. against you. Okay. And so my restraining order, is that going to be heard as well? I asked for one against her. The, the only one, that, the only thing that's being addressed today are the adequate cause that she has filed, the request for temporary orders that she has filed, and then you had set over a motion for contempt, or the court had set over a motion for contempt regarding visitation. Okay. I believe those are the only issues before the court. Your Honor, there was a restraining order that I got an emergency one. Right, that's what's being, that's the temporary orders that I'm talking about. Okay, so okay. Uh, am I permitted to speak about that yes. one as well? Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, so, so the adequate cause threshold, I have argued, it hasn't been met. That's um, all the reasons she has brought up. There hasn't been any substantial changes. And with regards to visiting my children, I just had a successful visitation. Uh, I'm making an offer of proof. I have pictures with me right now today of my myself doing parenting functions with my children which I, I can present if, if you accept. can consider any new papers today. Okay. Okay. And there was no supervised visitation. I had overnights with them. Um, reunification was perfectly okay. I don't feel it's necessary to have reunification therapy. When was that last visitation? Last visitation began the day after Christmas. Oh. It, it should have been. This year? Correct. This 2011. Last year, 2011, okay. And it ended on the 2nd of January, 2012. I attempted to see my children on Christmas Day, but the mother counted a weekend that I didn't get to see them, the weekend prior to Christmas break, as if it were my weekend, and then said Christmas break began the next day. So that was another issue I didn't litigate on, but I felt it was kind of uh, not in the best interest of the children to not be able to see me on Christmas Day. However, that happened, and then I got to see them the next day, and everything was successful. Um, and I have evidence here that I can submit later. Um, so wh why I feel the restraining order should continue against the mother or should be entered into? Well, is that something the, I... That whether the restraining order should continue against you. Okay. The restraining order should not continue against me. It was lifted in, with regards to the parenting plan by Commissioners Judson and then also Stroud or Strobe. That was the modification of the temporary uh, ex parte order, correct? Correct. Okay. Both of them felt it was completely unnecessary to restrict me from seeing my children, and they allowed me to see my children. And I did exercise visitation with my children, and I had attempted to exercise communication over the phone with my children, but the mother frustrated that process with conflict. And every time I've tried to be more involved in my children's life, the mother has frustrated that process with restricting access to medical records, to the school. So I, I'm trying the best I can to be able to support their medical and educational needs. When they're with me, I, I absolutely support that 100% of the time. I'm trying to also support it with the mother's help as the parenting plan does state that she is to facilitate that process with communications and also with uh, medical and dental information or medical and uh, educational information exchange. I did email the mother about the ER issue, what happened. This is in her inbox, an email that she uses regularly with me. Um, she attempted to bring up as if I kept her in the dark about this. I did not. I, I disclosed the reasons why I, I brought my daughter to um, a medical facility. And the report with regards to what she mentions that I wrote a report, I did not. This report was actually filed uh, for neglect by the staff psychologist on v uh, the Valley Medical Center staff. So you had been gone for eight months? No, Your Honor. How long had you been gone for? I had left the end of March 2011 and returned August 2011. It was a short period of time. So six months. 
approximately, yeah. Okay. And during that time, the visitation under the agreed final parenting plan was not exercised, and now you currently have a permanent residence in state? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And all of these other issues came up after the parenting plan was entered with CPS and with police and all of those issues, correct? After the parenting plan, the, the issues the she's... The original parenting plan, the ones that she's talking about in her paperwork, the CPS calls, the CP, uh, law enforcement. Some of these issues, Your Honor, she's bringing up are pre-decree. Okay, but which she, issues were post-decree? Post-decree. Post-parenting plan. The issues with uh, Thanksgiving timeframe, 2011. Okay. And Christmas timeframe, 2011. Um, that's that's all I'm aware of. Uh, the CPS issue that happened, well, not CPS issue, but taking my daughter to the ER that happened over okay. uh, my visitation Christmas schedule with my children. Okay. Anything else you want me to consider? 